Hello, everyone. Hello. Turn this up a little bit here so I can hear you guys when you talk back. All right. Well, we're going to continue in our becoming a uh, welcoming church tonight. And uh, we, we've got just a 40 minute time limit. So I'm going to try to not go over this time as I have the past couple of times. <laughs> that way I don't get charged. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with a word of prayer. Uh, do you guys have any prayer requests before we get started? No? Okay. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this evening, the opportunity we have to, uh, to connect together using technology. I pray that you'll uh, bless this time, bless our study together. We pray in Jesus' holy, precious name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I, it's going to be more based out of the book this week than, uh, than what we've done in the past couple of weeks. I've tried to really try to stick with scripture more so, but uh, this particular week's topic, scripture doesn't really speak to um, this stuff, so it's going to be a little bit different. So let me see if I can get this going here. There it goes. All right. So this week we're going to be talking about signs and sights. Signs and sights, talking about uh, church signs, outside, inside signs, and um, the website. And so obviously scripture doesn't speak directly to these, and so I don't have a scripture that uh, really goes with these. I was looking to try to find one that has to do with signs and uh, because uh, it talks about that you were not supposed to look for signs or rely on signs, but um, <clears throat> but I didn't find anything that I thought was just accurate to uh, to speak to, and so I didn't want to uh, do that. So uh, we're just gonna go <laughs> with a little bit something different. And so the yeah, you know, everywhere I go, I use GPS. I don't know about you guys. Uh, I grew up where you had to use a map and I uh, learned how to read maps in the military and uh, so I know how to use a map but GPS tells you exactly what you need to know and so uh, sometimes I do find that it doesn't tell me I need to turn quite soon enough and so I'm <laughs> cutting across three or four lanes of traffic trying to get over but but uh, most people these days use some form of GPS uh, frequently especially if they're going somewhere that they don't know and uh, in, in talking about this in our church uh, we, if you've been to the church more than about three or four times, you pretty much know where everything that you need to know is. And especially for uh, those of us who've been in uh, as deacons or uh, deacons' wives, I've been working in the building, you know where everything's at. You don't have to ask anybody. Um, but if a visitor's coming in, they don't know where anything is. And so uh, they have to have some sort of direction uh, to know where everything is. And so uh, tonight we're going to be talking about signs, church signs, and church websites. And so uh, Tom Rainer uh, begins by talking about five myths about church signage and websites. So I'll go through those real quickly. The first one is everyone knows where our church is located, um, <laughs> especially in small churches, small towns. Everybody, everybody goes, well, everybody knows where we're located. They know if they wanted to find us, they can find us. Um, but he says, you know, that, that's a myth. Not everybody knows. In fact, he was telling a story about um, somebody who worked in a building right across the street from the church, but because they weren't concerned about the church, they didn't even know it was there. They passed by it every day and right across the street and just had never even noticed it was there because they weren't concerned about it and nobody had pointed it out to them. Over there, I'm saying probably. Uh, the second church myth is that our church is, is small, so we don't need signs for people to get around. And uh, that's obviously a, a myth that uh, he has come to, to show, and we'll illustrate that and talk more about that here in just a minute. Uh, church websites are really not that important, and we'll talk a lot uh, more about that here in just a little bit. 
easy to get around in our church. <laughs> it's easy to get around in our church, um, uh, which can be true uh, if you know where you're going. And so we'll talk more about that in a minute too. And then number five, signs and websites are human-centered methodologies. They're not central to the gospel. Um, if you were to try to twist my arm and make me say one way or the other, I would say you're right. Uh, they're not, it, scripture doesn't address these things, but they are, I think, central to the gospel because uh, people are central to the gospel and uh, getting people in uh, to hear the gospel is essential. And so if we're not doing uh, that well, then it, it is a gospel issue. And we'll talk more about that here in just a minute as well. So let me re can review my notes here. Okay. So let's talk about church signage first. Um, we've talked a lot about hospitality and church, good church signs are a good sign of hospitality. If you have good signage, that, that means that you're anticipating, expecting guests. If you don't, then that communicates a message to them right away that uh, we weren't ready for you, we weren't, we're not expecting you. And so uh, the first thing that we need to remember with church signage is that it's not for us. It's not for members. It's not for people who've been there more than about two or three times. Uh, because by that point, they know where most everything's located. But it's for first-time guests uh, to be able to find the things that they uh, wouldn't be able to know where they are uh, the first time. So it's not it's for outsiders, uh, not for for members. It's for guests, not not the people who are there every week. Quality signage is important. And I'm not saying that we have to spend a lot of money on signage, uh, but. It is important that it's, you know, it's made well, that there's not a, a lot of grammatical mistakes because people will notice that. Uh, it's important that, um, uh, that they don't just look cheap, uh, but that someone actually took time to put this sign together. And so uh, I think that's important as well. And, and uh, Tom Rader points that out. Uh, the external church sign is also important, and uh, um, <clears throat> he talks about how big it should be, how small it should be, um, that, that you want it to be the right size with the signs around it. We don't really have that many signs around us, and so it's not that big of a deal as far as size goes, but what's important is uh, what's on the sign. And a good example of this um, was uh, a few weeks ago, my parents came uh, and they, we had changed the time to 1030 and I had told them that the time was 1030, uh, but they set out waiting uh, until a service was supposed to start at 11 uh, in their mind. And so they were, they were there plenty of time, but they were sitting out in their car in the front, um, just waiting for uh, closer to time because I had told them that we were starting Sunday school back and that it was in the sanctuary, and so they didn't want to walk in. Uh, but then my mom just happened to glance at the sign and see that, oh, yeah, it says that we start at 1030 now. And so they quickly uh, got their stuff and went inside, and we had already begun. And so, but it, it was just a, something that was important to, to on the sign to have the right time. And uh, there's stories about, you know, story upon story of people uh, not having the right time on their sign. And so people come in. Uh, and they've already begun or they're about over. And so, so that's important to have as well. Also, the, the parking lot should have clear signage um, because guests need to know where to park. And, and he says, you know, that there was a, a, a group that came in, a couple that came in, they drove around the first two or three lines of parking uh, and didn't find an open parking spot and so they just left because they couldn't find an open parking spot near the door and so it's important for us to have clear signage for parking as well uh, as well as in addition to that there should be a clear signage pointing to the entry points of the church and uh, you, some churches have uh, several i mean we have several entry points you could come in from diff several different ways uh, but a lot of uh, churches lock doors after the service has begun uh, so that all entry is pointed toward one place for safety. 
And so in that case, there, there needs to be signs pointing to where someone should go in. And we, we ran into this at one church that we were attending uh, that uh, we didn't know that they locked the doors. And so we were trying to get in. And thankfully, they had locked this door because if we had gone in the door that we were trying to go in, we would have been right up at the front uh, of the sanctuary. And so thankfully, that door was locked. And, and, uh, but there was no signs telling us that and no signs pointing to the front door. And so we just kind of stumbled our way along until we figured out where to get in. Uh, so it's important that we have an entry point, uh, signs that say, you know, come enter here. Uh, for our parking, there, there's two must signs, according to Tom Rayner, and I, I would agree with this. Uh, one is for handicapped, those who are not able uh, to walk, need a wheelchair, or are not able to walk far without a walker. Uh, they need to be able to have a space near the front. And then also guest parking needs to be clearly identified near the front as well. And uh, he says, you know, some churches also have additional marked parking for like senior adults or expectant mothers parking for families with that have preschoolers have them parked near uh, the preschool area so they can walk right in there. And so having signs that will just help people first time guests know where they need to go is important. Internal signage, talking about that, that's on the inside of the building, uh, needs to be good quality, have readable font, and be the correct height. Uh, if you can't read it from a distance because the font is uh, a fancy font, then the people are, aren't going to abide by it because they're not going to take time to try to comprehend what it says. So it needs to be just plain block type uh, where people can see it. And then correct height, if it's above someone, most people's heads, uh, they're not going to look at it. It needs to be where uh, within eye view. And so oftentimes we don't take, uh, take the position of a sign uh, to matter that much, but if it's above, out of the line of sight, then it's not going to, not going to matter because people aren't gonna read it. And then um, all signs should be friendly, communicate an attitude of hospitality. If you have a lot of don'ts on signs, then that communicates a negative attitude. Uh, don't bring food and drink into the sanctuary. Uh, he says one church that he went to evaluate says uh, on their sign, those bringing food or drink into the worship center will be asked to leave. Uh, so that's, that's not what you want to communicate to guests. And so uh, make sure that the signs are friendly and welcoming. He also spoke about uh, mobile signs that, you know, if you have multiple services uh, during the week, you can have different signage that's, um, that can be useful. We have some examples of that with the, the food distribution, just setting a sign out says, hey, come to this door for uh, food distribution uh, and, and the like. So mobile signage can be uh, beneficial. I think it would be very beneficial for um, our church if whenever we uh, resume having Wednesday evening services and, and uh, Sunday evening services uh, to, to uh, narrow down some of the doors and just you know come in this one <clears throat> other than that um, th this is really goes back to the idea of hospitality that we've um, been talking about so we should um, look at these every year at, at minimum and, and see are they still relevant do we have signs that we've had up there that are no longer correct just need to be taken down uh, and, and the like um, but this is this is part of communicating hospi in hospitality, um, saying, "Hey, we want you here. We welcome you here. We're we're prepared to have guests here, and so uh, that that should ultimately the goal would be to lead to a gospel conversation with someone, and so um, that that's what we want to do is to help welcome guests, show hospitality to outsiders." so that when they come, they know that they're welcomed. So, um, if you've been to Ardmore over by Central Park, there's a church with a bright red door. I've always wanted to go in that church just because I'm curious what's behind the bright red door, uh, but I've never <laughs> gone in. Um, but when you, when you think about this question of what led you to, to come visit our church, most people aren't going to say the bright red door. I'm just kind of a weirdo. Uh, but 
<clears throat> if you ask what, what led you to our church, um, most of the time it's, it's going to be uh, based on a new front door. Not, not that somebody drove by and, and saw the sign, not that somebody uh, drove by and saw the actual physical front door. In fact, um, Tom Rainer says that seven out of 10 guests, 70% of first time guests first visit the church's website. If they don't have a website, they're not likely to visit at all. Uh, and then if they don't have a good website, uh, then it's, it's going to be also, um, also less likely that they're going to visit. So having a good uh, website is important. And uh, so I, I've been working on this for us, trying to get a, a good website put in order and uh, still looking to, to do better at that. Uh, also looking for someone to uh, potentially take that over uh, in the near future. Um, and, and he goes on to point out that you, your potential new webmaster could be someone who's in high school or junior high uh, because uh, they know how to use the website uh, and the internet as well as anybody. And so um, as we're looking for someone to do that, we can, we can keep an eye out for someone who might be uh, good to do that. But here's, here's some mistakes that he says that we have uh, with church websites. The first one is that the address or the worship times are difficult to locate. Um, if they look and they can't find where you're located or there's not a way that if they look it up on their phone, they can hit and say, uh, okay, GPS to this location, uh, then they're not likely to, to come and visit. And so having uh, the address on there is important and also having the right time because you, they don't wanna show up uh, early, too early where it's, it's awkward, they don't wanna show up too late where they're walking in the middle of the sermon and having uh, the correct worship time is very important. Also having outdated information. Uh, he, he tells a story about uh, he, as he was writing the book, it was in uh, uh, like late October when he was writing this and uh, the church website that he visited had um, a promotion for Easter of the year before. And so we want to make sure that the website information is staying up to date and uh, to the best of our ability. I thought this one was interesting. A lack of clarity about what the church beliefs or church's doctrine. And he says, you know, not all guests are going to check this, uh, but there will be many that will. I know anytime I'm looking to uh, visit a church, that's what I want to go to is see, is the church that I'm going to go visit, are, are they Bible believing or do they have correct beliefs and doctrine or are they going to be teaching some heresy that I would be exposing my children to? And so not everybody's going to check that, but it's, it was, uh, it's, he said, you may lose as many as half of your potential guests if you don't have um, clarity about what you believe in your doctrine. If the website has incomplete or total lack of information out about children's ministries or student ministries, uh, then you're going to lose uh, many parents and so he says, if you want to win over these parents, you need to tell them explicitly, uh, not only where they can go, what information you have, but exactly how does a church uh, go about keeping their kids safe and secure while they attend church. And we'll talk more about that uh, next week. And so, and he also said, you know, if, if you require a check-in, then you can do that online prior to visit and that would help ex uh, expedite measures. Another is poor graphics or copy. <laughs> I've really tried to not have any of that, uh, but he, I, it is important to have not just pictures of the building, but of pictures of church members on the, uh, on the website as well. And so uh, that might be something we want to look into to trying to do over the next uh, few weeks is take some pictures of during the service, um, pictures during any events that we have to be able to post on the website as well. Uh, so that we don't have to rely on those. And then hardly visible contact information. If there's not a good way, good place where they can contact the church and someone there to respond to it, uh, then it, it's not going to be, um, it's not going to go very well. You're not going to have very many guests if they ask questions and, and nobody responds to it. So um, having a, a way for someone to respond to questions right now, uh, we've got uh, the, the Gmail account um, listed there. I received that on my phone, so I'm able to respond. But if we um, had others that were able to respond as well, that would be uh, be better. 
And then no photos of pastor staff or other leadership. Um, and I've been working on that. So uh, Richard and Dan, y'all might want to take a look and see your Nicole, see your picture on uh, that I put on there uh, under staff on the and leadership of, on the website. So if you want me to change it, you can send me another one. I'll swap them out. But uh, I wanted to make sure and have that on there. So. Um, and there's a lot of other things that could be listed on a website, uh, like uh, steps on how to become a Christian and stuff. And, and so I'm still working on that. But if you uh, have an opportunity to, to look at the website or maybe someone that you work with, uh, say, hey, would you mind evaluating this website for me and see if there's anything on here that you would want, uh, want to know that we haven't addressed and just do some evaluation so we can improve on that. <clears throat> I want to share this story with you, and it's going to take a minute, but uh, this, he says uh, this is a sad but true story. He's changed names to protect the guilty, uh, but <clears throat> he says, uh, I met Ella during a series of interviews I was conducting for a church consultation. One of our assignments was to contact guests who came to the church but did not return. After I heard her story, I was amazed she even stayed for the service after her first visit. So Ella is married, but her husband does not attend church. The family was new in town, but Ella was determined to get her three children, all under the age of seven, back in church after they had spent two years out of church. She passed a church sign and noted it in her mind as, she, as a place to visit the next Sunday. She looked up the church on the website, found the time for the worship service, and planned a visit. The website indicated that the service started at 1015. It actually started at 10. Time of the service was changed seven months earlier, but no one had thought to change it on the website. So when Ella arrived at 10.05, instead of being 10 minutes early, she was five minutes late. By the way, it started to rain as she drove to the church, and she couldn't find any signs for guest parking, so she parked some distance from the church entrance. And yet she still moved forward in the rain with three young kids in tow. Since she was late, she didn't really have anyone to follow into the church facility, so she went to the obvious front entrance, only to find the doors locked. Two of the children had begun crying, and all of them were now soaking wet, but Ella was determined, and she finally found the right door. Now, by this time, the greeters had gone to their seats, so there was no, no one to lead her and tell her where to take her children. There were also no signs to tell Ella where to take her children, but so exasperated but determined, she made three wrong turns in hallways, but finally found the children's area. So by the time she finally made it into the service, she had missed the first 20 minutes, and she had trouble focusing for obvious reasons. Ella still completed a guest card and turned it in when the offering plate came by later. She was curious if anyone would actually contact her. And when no one did, she was not surprised. Says Ella was gracious but factual in her interview. She said unequivocally that she had no plans to return to that church. And without his prompting, she offered some further counsel. She let me know that she was a Christian and that she and her children ultimately did find a good church home. But she told me that if she were not a Christian, and if she had summoned the courage for only one church visit, she would never have returned to any church after her bad experience. He says her, her final words are worthy of a direct quote, and that's what I want to get to. That church and everything it did, bad website, no signs inside or out, no greeters around, sent me a clear message. Guests are not welcome here. If I had not been a Christian before I came to the church, I would probably still not be one today. And so as, as he concludes this chapter, he says, it's not just about signs and sights. It's about the message of hospitality that we share. The message of hospitality becomes the pathway where we can share the message of the gospel with people. And so that's why we must work on these areas to become more welcoming churches. So some points to ponder as we close tonight. I'm going to go ahead and put all these up here. Do you think any of the five myths of, about church signage and websites are present in our church? Do you think our website, website shows clearly the most important information for guests? <clears throat> Why do you think it matters if we have our beliefs on the website and how does this information make you view our church differently? So if you have any uh, words of response to any of those or, or to the lesson in general, I'd love to hear them. 
I've kind of always thought that, you know, down those hallways wouldn't be bad to have, you know, some signage where the nursery is. And there is sign. Where it's the, like. they, those that are there are, I mean, the signs that we do have are flat where you've got to get right to the door to see them. I've always thought that we might, that you might have a, you know, something sticking out up high where no one would run into it, but where it, you know, with, with whatever, whatever room it is on there. Right. Rest, restrooms, women's restroom, men's restroom. Yeah, I think the way our restrooms are situated would be, a, that would be an important one to have of making mention of one way or the other where the restrooms are located. One thing I did, I, I did kind of think about though was, you know, if, you know, a lot of people don't like to ask, but if they do ask, I mean, I mean, you're, you, you've kind of got an opening to a conversation mm -hmm. instead of your signs just leading them everywhere they're going. Uh, I, I don't know if that, if he ever, if he ever discussed that or not. No, he didn't address didn't that. Address that. State. and probably you know a lot of a lot of people that are christians probably i i have i've looked at other churches websites before and that's what i look for is their 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 doctrines and beliefs their doctrinal statement their beliefs i think that's probably something important to have on the website yeah, I don't remember what I have on ours. I think I just um, pretty much copied the Baptist Faith and Message and put it on ours, um, which is what we have in our bylaws that we abide by. So, all right. Well, I continue to think on it. And uh, one thing that I was looking at that we might want to do in the future is he's got some questions back here for a uh, a secret church shopper uh, that you can invite a friend to come and just evaluate the church. And so uh, that might be something we look at uh, doing once we finish the study. We're, we're halfway through. It's only got six chapters. We're through with uh, chapter three. So uh, we'll be wrapping up in, in just a few weeks with this. So, All right. Well, if nothing else, we'll uh, close with a word of prayer and, and be dismissed. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity we have to join together and to discuss our church and uh, ways that we can be more hospitable to guests. I pray that you'll continue to lead us and guide us, give us uh, fresh eyes this Sunday as we go uh, into our, our church building, that we would look with uh, guest eyes to see uh, what are some things that we might uh, could improve on to help um, help guests get around and, uh, and help us to uh, have gospel conversations with them. God, we pray through all things that the name of Jesus Christ is lifted up and glorified. And I pray that you'll be with us as we go out the rest of this week. Pray this in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Hey, Richard.